Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to explain all of the features and technical specifications of the DMC2 Mini. So if you're interested in buying one, this will tell you everything you need to know to help you decide if this is the right machine for your needs. If there isn't any machining going on in this video, that will be in an entirely separate video all about speeds and feeds and performance in different materials. So make sure you watch that after this video to see the DMC2 Mini in action. So first of all, what is the DMC2 Mini? As the name suggests, this is our smaller version of the popular DMC2 CNC machine that we've been selling for some time now. The DMC2 Mini is a 3-axis and upgradable to 4-axis metal cutting desktop CNC machine kit that is designed with one main goal, and that is to provide machine shop quality 0.01mm tolerances in all metals at an affordable price tag in a compact package. The machine measures 23 inches wide, 20 inches in depth, and a maximum of about 29 inches tall. The DMC2 Mini comes as either a build-it-yourself kit or a fully assembled, ready-to-run machine for an additional build fee. The DMC2 Mini has a 12-inch X-axis, 7-inch Y-axis, and a 5.5-inch Z-axis. Note that the Z-axis travel ends about 0.75 inches above the top of the bed, so at maximum Z height you have about 6.75 inches of total internal space. Each axis has inductive end-stop sensors for repeatable and accurate homing, and each axis rides on thick 15mm guide rails. All three axes have 12mm ball screws, with the X and Y axes having dual spring-loaded ball nuts to eliminate any potential mechanical backlash. The machine comes with a 24,000 RPM 2.2 kW ER20 collet spindle that features very low runout and high quality thrust bearings in the nose to handle high radial loads when cutting metal. We'll talk about the fourth axis in a bit, but it's basically a bolt-on accessory that's plug and play with the 5 axis breakout board that the machine comes with. The entire machine is available in either 110 volt or 210 volt spindle configurations. There is no difference in performance between these two variations, just less current draw. The entire machine on 110 volts will draw about 15 amps maximum under heavy cutting loads, and the 220 volt version will draw about 8 amps max. All four axes on the DMC2 Mini are driven by closed loop stepper servo motors. These motors check for positional errors and e-stop the entire machine and spindle if there is a stall or slip detected, so you can leave the machine unattended for longer periods of time. We've actually increased the accuracy of the machine very slightly just by switching to larger NEMA 23 motors, which have a little more torque, so extremely small movements are more accurately executed. These motors are very fast, maxing out at around 2,500 mm per minute feed rates or 100 inches per minute with high acceleration, so that means the machine can make moves and directional changes very fast which is important for efficient high-speed machining. The frame of the DMC2 machine is constructed out of rigid steel tubing and steel plates, with aluminum panels all around, all of which are powder-coated with a uniform and clean coating. An important new upgrade for accuracy is that all of the critical mating surfaces for the steel tubes are machined flat, and the brackets that connect the sensitive components are all CNC machined for the best possible accuracy from the parts. The entire Z-axis is also now one billet aluminum block, simplifying the build and contributing to an overall highly accurate machine. In conjunction with machine surfaces, what gives the DMC2 Mini its extremely high accuracy in machine parts is that the entire machine is fully able to be trammed and squared after it's built. We've done this by adding points where you can adjust the Z-axis rotation, the tilt, the squareness, and the perpendicularity of the X and Y axes. So basically every single axis is able to be adjusted relative to one another for a perfectly square machine. I'll have an entirely separate video on tramming and squaring the DMC2 Mini after this, since that itself has its own special process that I want to go over in detail. Around the side, we've added an upgraded oil distribution system that meters oil to each section of the machine that needs it. There's an included pump and reservoir as well, which makes oiling quick and easy. And of course, we still have a speed-controlled flood coolant system with an included pump and hoses. The coolant is controlled in software by selecting coolant on in your CAM program, or it can be manually overridden, which is much more convenient when you want to start a job, for example, with the cover off and not make a mess. The front of the machine has the coolant on and off and speed control as well as the e-stop button in an easy to reach area. At the very back of the machine is our waterproof metal electronics cabinet, which houses the breakout board, controller board, motor drivers, and coolant electronics. We've made significant ease of use improvements here as well with an updated breakout board that has diagnostic LEDs for power, signals, button states, spindle output, and basically everything I.O. related at a glance to determine if something is functioning or not on the electrical side. This makes troubleshooting very straightforward and simple. We don't usually see problems with the DMC2 electronics, but there is always the chance for human error when you're connecting and wiring things up yourself, and maybe one in every 100 people who are building the kit might cross a wire or swap two things accidentally. And before that was annoying to track down with a multimeter, but now it's as clear as just an indicator light to show if something is not where it should be or not outputting the signal that it's supposed to. 
Speaking of electronics and wiring, we've made massive improvements to the kit building experience here too. And now all of the low voltage electrical wires are pre-stripped, pre-made connectors, which makes assembly go way faster. And all of the other wire for everything else, like the power supply, spindle buttons, etc., are all pre-measured, stripped, and pre-soldered. So you just stick them where they need to go and screw them in. This simplifies everything and saves you hours of time and effort. The spindle motor uses high flex double shielded and grounded oil resistant cable and is intentionally routed separate from any low voltage signal wires in the electrical cabinet so that electrical interference is not an issue. The DMC2 Mini ships with an economical off the shelf 5 axis Mach 3 controller board and the reason for this choice is because the board and software support USB connectivity and an MPG jog wheel which we sell as well. This jog wheel is convenient since it allows you to quickly jog the machine around at any step increment you want very efficiently for probing and setting up parts rather than having to play a dancing game on the keyboard trying to get close to things without precise control and ending up smashing tools. The DMC2 Mini breakout board accepts 5 volt step and direction signals from the Mach 3 board. So if for whatever reason you don't want to use Mach 3 and want to use Gerbil or Linux CNC or Centroid or some different controller, you can easily swap the Mach 3 board out and they should all be compatible as long as your board of choice operates with standard step and direction signals as well. At the front of the machine we have an upgraded coolant cover. This cover has thicker 4mm plastic windows that are much more rigid and can take a beating, and the cover itself is also way taller up to the top of the frame of the machine, which helps to keep chips and debris in since the top has to remain open for the spindle to move across. The taller cover means there's a lot more space above the bed to allow for the 4th axis to fit and not consume any y-axis travel. Again, more on that in a separate upcoming 4th axis video. Coolant used in the machine drains out of the back through the return trough, down the return hose, and into a reservoir where the high pressure pump will draw coolants back up and send it back to the cutting area. Chips are caught in the chip tray which can be easily removed and dumped out. The bed of the DMC2 Mini is a two-piece aluminum structure where the bottom connects all of the bearings and motion components and the top is a 15mm thick slab of aluminum that's pre-machined with mounting holes. The idea behind this is that you machine the top surface down to create a perfectly parallel plane after the first time you install it, and then you machine any additional mounting holes for your vise or other fixturings. As you consume the surface over time, or if you want different fixture plates to swap on and off, you can buy more of these bed pieces from us or just make them yourself since it's designed to be an off-the-shelf rectangular piece of aluminum of any thickness with precise mounting hole locations that you can mill on the DMC2 Mini itself or even just a drill press. Accurate probing is a very important part of CNC machining because you need to know exactly where your part is, especially if you're machining on top of something that already has existing features machined into it so that the two operations match up exactly. For probing on the DMC2 Mini, we have our magnetic XY probe that snaps into place when needed and works with the automatic X and Y axis probing buttons built into Mach 3 to automatically find and measure the position of your metal parts to within 0.01mm accuracy. For the z-axis or tool height, we have our tool puck sensor that simply is placed on top of your probing surface and detects the height from the tip of the end mill to the surface below. With those three measurements for x, y, and z, you can have your part fully probed in and be ready to accurately begin cutting all within just 20 seconds. Now I want to talk about some features on the DMC2 Mini that are not apparent at first glance but still important to mention, and that's to do with the actual user experience with building the DMC2 kits themselves. About 90% of people opt to buy the DMC2 machines from us as a kit rather than an assembled unit. Which is great, you save money, you get to make it yourself, and I can save time and focus on the logistics of the company rather than hiring and managing a workforce. You also save a lot on shipping since the kits ship in boxes anywhere around the world right to your doorstep in dense, small packages that make shipping cheaper. The first thing we've done to improve the build experience is to just trim down the amount of components on the DMC2 Mini. There are less pieces to assemble and more pieces doing double and triple duty, so essentially a more optimized design that still retains structural rigidity needed for a CNC. We've gone away from laser cutting most of our components and now transition to CNC machine components wherever possible, so even if they cost a little more, having less components overall still manages to reduce the final cost of the whole machine. The second major time saver and quality of life improvement is the whole electrical system. As mentioned before, our boards are all pre-assembled so no soldering required there and all of the electrical wires are pre-cut to length and pre-stripped and soldered so they are ready to install where needed. Everywhere where possible we've also switched to using connectors so you can assemble wires outside of the machine and then plug the entire cable in after installing the control boards so there's no rat's nest of wiring to deal with during the electrical assembly process. There are still a few wires to solder where different suppliers ship their components with chopped wire ends but the amount is significantly less than it was before. With all of these ease of assembly improvements, the assembly process has gotten a lot simpler and faster, but I don't want to oversell that fact and make you think this is a quick couple of hours assembly. There is still no escaping from the fact that there are, for example, 6 rails, 3 ball screws, 3 entire axes of moving parts, and some 50 or so components overall that need to be assembled. 
So this build will take you on average, I'm estimating about two to four days to complete. You can most likely finish it all over a single weekend, but budget for a little more time in case you are buying this machine for something urgent that you need to start cutting as soon as possible. Another important upgrade that speeds up assembly is the tramming system built in. So that means you can put the entire frame together without any concern at all for accuracy or alignment. You simply bolt everything together as it naturally wants to align, and then afterwards you can worry about tramming everything once the machine is completely built. There is a specific sequence to building everything, so make sure you are following along the assembly manuals in order. The assembly manuals are very detailed documents loaded with pictures and explanations at every single step, so they will guide you through the entire build process and often explain why something is important to pay attention to now and what it will affect later on. There are a lot of part numbers for replacements in case you ever need to replace something years down the line, and for that reason the manuals are a private document so you do need to purchase the machine first to get access to them. As many components as possible on the DMC2 Mini are off the shelf and easy to source should anything go wrong. That includes all the electronics, motors, hardware pieces, ball screws, ball nuts, bearings, rails, and so on. Basically everything that isn't the frame itself. Nothing much should ever go wrong with the frame, but we do of course stock components and spares for everything in case somehow you ever do need a structural component replaced. Like if you dropped the machine off of a table and bent all the panels or something catastrophic like that. So all of these changes and improvements to the DMC2 platform might sound expensive, but in reality there has been so much optimization going on with parts and logistics between suppliers that we've actually managed to get the price down significantly from the original DMC2. Of course this is also due to the fact that the machine is smaller and uses less material as well. That also cuts the shipping prices in half, since the original DMC2 weighed in at about 220 pounds, and now the DMC2 Mini weighs half of that at about 110 pounds. The DMC2 Mini kits ship in five separate boxes ready to deliver to any address in the world via DHL or UPS, and the pre-assembled DMC2 Mini machines ship in a crate, and at the moment deliver only within Canada and the USA. We are located in Toronto, Canada, so if you are able to pick up a machine locally, that's an option as well. That sums up pretty much everything technical about the DMC2 Mini that you should know before purchasing. Now of course make sure you watch the actual machining videos posted after this so you can see how this machine performs cutting various metals so you can determine if the DMC2 Mini is the right machine for your needs. Thanks for watching and don't forget to share this video with someone you think might be interested.